Hi right, folks, Simon here. Welcome back to the channel, continuing on with Chrono Cross today. For the last couple of episodes, we've been doing a fair bit of optional content, and I hope you guys have been enjoying that. But now we are going to once again move on to advancing the story. Now, we want to, well, let's just say we've been hearing a lot of talk about the Dead Sea area, which is over here. The problem is there's no seemingly easy way to access it right now. We're completely blocked off, so we need to find out how to do that. Now, to kick things off, we're going to head over to Marbjol. We have visited Marbjol before. We've purchased some traps when we were in control of normal surge. And I hope you did that because we are going to be using those traps later. And we're not going to be able to purchase them again before because we're at the homeworld version of Marbjol, not the alternate reality version, which is where those traps are available. And we can't switch back. So, yep, if you've been following along with the guys, that won't be a problem. If not, and you didn't buy those traps, you are going to miss out in a little while, sadly. Now, this version of Marbule has these weird ghostly apparitions walking around. We don't know much about them right now, and we can't interact with them in any way, shape, or form. So, they're going to leave us be, and we're going to leave them be, quite frankly, at least for the time being. There isn't indeed a huge amount going on here in Marbjol right now, but we can chat to some of the NPCs. And if I can actually line myself up since they're behind buildings, this is Ash, I believe. Yes, he is the assistant to Sir Toma, who is just next to him right now. So once we've introduced ourselves to Ash, we can go and speak to Toma. Now, I'm not all that familiar with Chrono Trigger, the game, but I do you believe there was a Toma in that game as well that looks pretty much identical to this Toma, but they are not the same character. However, I do believe they are related, but those of you that are experts in both Chrono Cross and Chrono Trigger, I'm sure, can uh, expand on that if you wish to do so in the comments. But it's just one of the connections between the two games, since, you know, they're not, you know, Chrono Cross isn't like a sequel or anything, but it does share the same uh, connections really I suppose is the best way of saying it okay so we're going to speak to Toma again and this time we can ask him about various things so we can ask him about the uh, about the ghost things only Toma doesn't seem to to know much about them he calls them the black nightmare but other than that he's at a loss the same as we are we can ask him about the village. <laughs> it's called a ghost town. Get what you did there. And then finally, and the one we actually need, well, we could choose what's new. Okay, get a bit of an interesting tidbit there, but what we need to choose is to ask about the Dead Sea. This will allow us to advance the story. And yeah, Toma plans to launch an expedition there himself at some point. We need to, right now, be interested in Death's Door. A secret entrance to the Dead Sea. Sadly, Toma himself is none the wiser about that. But he does point us in the direction of the SS Zalbes, which is the ship you may have seen on the world map. As you've been sailing around now before we go ahead and leave we're going to enter this building here and we can choose to stay the night by interacting with the bed we're going to say yes we would love to rest and during the night we get another dialogue choice we can check out the voices we hear outside if you remember Toma mentioned that uh, somebody was being woken up by ghostly voices or we can go back to sleep and ignore it. We are, of course, going to check it out. And the only thing we can do here at night time is speak to, well, uh, approach this mermaid, in fact, who goes diving off. But we do get Toma's attention.
Okay, so... A few tidbits of information about the mermaid that went swimming off, but that's not the end of the scenes yet. And they're going to continue into the daytime as well. Right, so let's go ahead and leave this room. And here she comes. Okay, so Irene's or Irina's uh, wants to come with us, but she's not going to be joining the party, which means that we are effectively done here in Marbule, and we can now go ahead and start making our way over to the SS Zalbest ship. I do recommend before boarding the ship that you do ensure that your party is how you want them because, well, once we kick off the story in this place, we're not going to be able to leave until we're done. There's not a huge amount of enemies, but there is a boss fight. Talking of a boss fight, I did tell you at the start of episode 12 of this playthrough to stock up on some traps. In particular, I mentioned to make sure you purchase traps for Carnivore, Deluge and Thunderstorm. And that's because those traps were very quickly after that going to be made unavailable to us. They have been. So hopefully you got them because we're going to be needing them for the next boss fight. So let's go ahead now and board the Zalbes. The layout of the Zalbes is pretty much identical to the Invincible, the ship that we explored previously. But of course things are a little bit different in terms of design and what we need to do. So I'm going to guide you through the process. First off, we're going to make our way aboard properly and get inside the bowels of the ship itself. I have been uh, doing a couple of practice runs so that I can try and pinpoint you to the right locations without any trouble, since otherwise you do need to explore, uh, which of course you're welcome to do, but for the purposes of a walkthrough, I'm hoping to get you through it in one piece relatively quickly. Okay, so let's make our way down here. Uh, we can save, but we'll do that in a minute. There's an inn just over there. But we'll go to that in a few moments' time. We're going to start by heading over to the door that's furthest to the right of the ones we can access. We can't get past here yet to the Grand Slam since the guard pirate is not going to let us. But what we can do is enter this room and we're going to be in the way of the old man here. He's doing some janitorial work. And we're going to let him through. We can ask him about the Marble Sage if we wish. But we're going to find some information about that in a moment anyway. Yep, the all-important floor mopper needs to get through. Very important on a ship like this. So he was the leader of Marble for making his way over here. And, yeah, that's all we need to do for now. So, if we speak to this guy, as he says, he won't let us through without the captain's permission. The captain is uh, Fargo, who we have spoken to previously. You may remember that. Uh, on the Invincible... Not the Invincible. Yeah, the Invincible. I think invincible or Invisible. Whatever it was, uh, the previous ship is when we spoke to him. Anyway, let's make our way back up here. To Fargo's room. And he is located just up here. So we're going to have a bit of a scene with him. Quite a bit of dialogue. And Irene's is here. kind of weird in this game don't you think when you get long scenes of dialogue how the music always stops it's like silence while they speak
And off she goes. For now. Yeah, so after the scene with Irene's and Fargo, we're going to speak to him again. And we're going to request permission so that we can get access to the Grand Slam since the guard won't let us through without it. So he wants to make a deal with us. He wants to do a bit of gambling. I mean, he's a pirate, so that should come as no surprise. And if we beat him, he will help us. If we lose, he wants our ship. Well, I don't know if that sounds exactly like a fair deal, but as you know, far as the game and the story are concerned, if we want to progress, we have to agree to it. So I guess we're kind of forced to do this. Righty-ho, so the casino is located just on the lower level here. Before we go here, I am going to go and save. And that's because I want to make a video about the casino whilst we're here. As well, a separate video. So if we go into the inn, we'll find a beautiful save point. There it is, right at the entrance. Okay, so heading back up now. We're going to go straight into the casino and see what it is we're going to have to do as far as trying to beat the captain here. Yeah, so this game is effectively a very basic form of roulette. And don't worry if you've never played roulette before. It's very simple what we need to do. And it's got a bit of a bit of a piratey twist to it, of course. As this is what I'm gonna call compass roulette. It's not like with the little ball going round in the machine, trying to land on the reds and blacks with the numbers and that. It's far more simple. Yeah, get out of here, guys. This is a private game. Yep, very easy then. There's a compass, north, east, south and west. And you want to make sure the pointer stops on north to win. If it stops on south, you lose. So we take it in turns until that happens. So just tap the confirm button on your turn. And oh look, we lost. This game, this first game here is a fix. So don't worry, you are always going to lose. You may not lose immediately, but you are always going to lose it before the game is up. I lost immediately there. We might have had a few more rounds, but you can't win it, okay? The story requires that you lose. Now, once the captain's gone, we can play more of this. And... There's some good reasons for doing so. But before we do that, we're going to head back to the inn for another scene. And also so we can save our game again. Because why not? Then we're going to be taking a detour back to the casino. So I can explain that to you and why you want to do it and how to do it. There is a trick. Naughty Kitty.
Firstly then, a quick overview. You've seen this in action when we just did the story bit, but it's very simple. The only difference now is that we do have to pay 100 gold for each time we play this game. And we start off with 100 points. Now, when we finish, the more points we have, the better the prize we can get. And we want to get to 10,000 points because that will allow us to get the rainbow shell. We can only get one rainbow shell from the game, but the rainbow shell is used in crafting the best equipment. Okay, and the amount of rainbow shells you can get in this game are few and far between. So we don't want to miss out on getting at least the rainbow shell. If we continue to play and get 10,000 points, we can get more Denadorite uh, crafting materials, which is pretty good for armor and stuff and weapons that we can craft, you know, at this stage of the game. But we do want that single rainbow shell. Here's the problem. It seems to be completely RNG based. Now, if you land on north, let's press the button, you'll double your points. If you land on east, you'll get 50 points. Land on south, you'll lose everything. Land on west, you'll lose 50 points. So we need to be landing on a lot of norths to get anywhere near 10,000. Okay, so we've got 300 now. If we land on north again, we'll get 600. So on and so forth. Oh, look, another north. So right now, I'm doing it completely as the game expects you to do it. Okay, so we're just seeing how far we can get by randomly tapping the button. And to be honest, I'm not doing too bad. I don't think I've done this well before. 1,200 points. I mean, we still need to win a few more times here. Unfortunately, yeah. It's inevitable you're going to hit south before getting to 10,000 points. Because <laughs> it's just, you know, one in four, isn't it, really? And we're back to zero. Okay, so you see how the game plays properly. To be honest, I was happy with 1,200 points. That wasn't too bad at all. If only there was a way we could manipulate this game. You know edge it a little more in our favor well there is at least with the radical dreamers edition i'm not sure if there's a way you could do this if you're playing the original game now this is going to determine be determined by which console or system you're playing on i know this works with the pc version and i'm playing the ps4 version it also works okay for nintendo and xbox i would assume it works in a similar way but you'll have to tell me in the comments if it does or not. Okay, so we're going to start the game again. Now, this isn't 100% guaranteed to get you to 10,000 points, but in my practice, it's very darn close, okay? You'd be unfortunate not to be able to do it. So, same again. We start with 100 points. Now, let's go ahead. We can't pause the game, okay? If you try and use the pause button, nothing happens. But what we can do is go to the home screen on the PlayStation 4, or you can bring up the PC menu by tapping the escape key on the keyboard for the same thing. What we want to do is pay very close attention to the red pointer that's spinning round and see the position that it's in. You only get a split second, but it's enough to see when you pause the game to go to the home screen. Did you notice how the red pointer was facing towards the north? Not quite north, it was sort of after uh, west, but close to north. We want the pointer pretty much positioned over the east direction. So I'm going to keep doing this until that red pointer is over east. Doesn't have to be exactly on east, but pretty close to it. Can take a few times, uh, a few times, a few times. Okay, that's pretty close to east now. Okay, so I want links to stop the compass as soon as we open the game back up. So to open the game back up, I'm just going to spam the confirm button so that as soon as the game opens, he stops the compass. And watch what happens. Okay, we got west. You do sometimes get west, but you usually get north. Okay, fortunately, west is only losing 50 points. So let's try again. Just keep opening and closing until we get the point positioned over the east. That was close to the north. Yeah, it can take a few tries. Mm, I'd say we can try that. It was just past the east. See what happens. Perfect. Okay, that's what we're aiming for. So let's keep continuing. You're very, be very unfortunate if you get this on the uh, south. 
If you accidentally do this while it's close to north, that will likely get you onto south. Or sort of like close to north or west. So it can be a little bit pedantic having to keep doing this, but it is the only real way of forcing the RNG where you want it, in my experience. And normally I get it closer to east. There we go. A little bit more often. So I'm going to once again to spam the confirm button to open the game and tap the compass immediately. As fast as you can. There we go. And we got north again. Just as we expected. So it might seem like it's going to take a while. But as I mentioned. Because it's doubling each time. I think we can give that a go. It shouldn't take that long. So now we're already at 400. Let's try again. I don't want to edit this so you can see that it does work. Okay, which means just having to be patient. Okay, we're fairly close to east there. Once more, you know, if you're not quite close enough to east, then you'll probably get west rather than north, which isn't a huge deal. You'll just lose 50 points. Now, we are going to keep playing because we do want to get to 10,000. And just the same thing, really. Uh, yeah, we can try this. I think if this doesn't quite match up, it's likely to go to east, but it did. Perfect. So you can do this quite consistently. It's a really good little trick. You do just have to be patient while you keep spamming in and out of the home screen. But at least you're pretty much guaranteeing, you know, that pointer to land on north. Okay, so it's very close to east again, so we'll do it again. There we go. You see how this works? 3,200. Two more, if we get this right. And we are sorted. We've got 10,000 points, or just over 10,000 points. There we go. North again. 6,000, what is it? 6,000 something. Yeah, 6,400. So one more, if we can get this right. We'll be perfect. Yeah, let's try that. Brilliant. Once you get into a routine, it's really not that difficult. And you automatically will be kicked out. He's like, no, you, you're getting too good. I don't like it. <laughs> but yeah, perfect. We do get a trophy as well for that. Along with the rainbow shell ingredient. And as I say, you can continue to do this, but you won't get any more rainbow shells. You'll just get some other crafting reagents. Uh, for 10,000 points. The other prizes, by the way, are just for the sake of, you know, knowledge. Nine, uh, sorry, 500 to 950, you get a bone. Fairly useless. 1,000 to 4,950 points or net you a piece of iron. And 5,000 to 9,950 or net you a piece of mithril. So the main thing you're here for is that rainbow shell. But with this little manipulation technique... There's really no reason not to get it, let's be honest. Anyway, back near the inn, we're going to head over from the right-hand side of the ladder and over to... Well, you see there's three rooms. This time we're going for the middle one. Stage performers only, please no autographs. Right, okay. Well, we can't go in there, so let's head over here. So, now we get an exciting show. <laughs> yeah, this guy just instills confidence, doesn't he? <laughs> wow yeah that is impressive I've got to say I mean in a world with magic and elements and cat people and all kinds of weird creatures maybe not as impressive but still 
I'm not gonna grumble. <laughs> Would you really want that guy sitting on you? <laughs> Somebody always has to open their big mouth. Jack. <laughs> so her name was Jill, his name's Jack. <laughs> Seeing as how he was just catified, I think he'd be a bit more impressed than that. I'll tell you what, this is top quality entertainment on this ship. It really is. Well, nothing untoward happened at least, did it? So we can go back and everything will be normal, yes? We can have round two of the show. Yeah, since Catamorphosis was so popular. Oh boy. He strained his back and collapsed, which means we're stuck as cats. Well, don't worry, guys. It's all part of the plan. Oh dear. Yeah, we are going to be stuck as cats for a little while, unfortunately. But it is what it is. So, now, in cat form, we're going to be able to do a couple of things we couldn't before. We can still climb ladders. Because, hey, you know, cats are good at climbing and all of that stuff. Uh, and if we head over to this room just here. There is an item we should be able to grab out of the box. Yeah, it's a weapon. Fry pan AG47. Okay, so, yeah. And also, whilst we're in cat, fra uh, cat form... We speak to the other cat that's in this room. This is the only time we can do this. We get another frame. I'll tell you what, Monster Mouth, pretty frightful frame, if you ask me. 
But like I say, this is your opportunity to get it, so make sure you do. Now, you might also remember a little bit earlier, the inn had some uh, had a cat, if you remember that, and got told off for climbing and stuff. Well, we're going to head over to the inn ourselves now. And use the same ladder that the previous cat got in trouble for climbing. It's a fix! I said it was a fix when the guy beat us earlier. Except when we was doing RNG stuff, then we fixed it. But as far as the story is concerned, they use a magnet. So that people can't win too much. Probably just like real casinos. Well, it seems like uh, Sneff's back. Has mended enough for him to go and gamble, but can he heal us yet? Well, before we go back and find out, we need to grab the handle here. Okay, that's the key item we need to get so that we can proceed with the story. I don't think there's anything else for us to grab from this room if I remember. Nah. Yeah, once you got the handle, we're going to go ahead and leave the inn, making our way back to Sneff. So, uh, let's just head through the main door. And then we can go through the little hole in the wall here. This will take us back to him. And we'll see what he's got to say for himself. Well, that's got to be a good sign. Yeah, we don't need the act now, mate. Just change us back, please. Yep, perfect stuff. We are back to normal for now. Let's try and stay well away from that guy, shall we? Uh, right, I'm going to go and save. Yeah, after that, make your way back up to Fargo's room. And you'll find that he's having a conversation with Nikki. And Nikki wants to go past the, or through the Grand Slam. Okay, so with Nikki gone, we're going to speak to Fargo. And yep, yeah, we're certainly going to do it. Now, for whatever reason, uh, which makes no sense to me, I'm going to be honest with you. Despite the fact that Fargo has won our boat, I'd say fair and square, but we know there's a bit of a fix going on there. Although we've taken the uh, handle now of the magnet they use. Uh, but he's going to allow us to have our boat back if we beat him. What we've got to offer in return if we lose as part of this new deal, who knows? And yep, Fargo is always going to hit the south. 
Okay, fair enough. Since he got caught cheating, that's why he's letting us off. The good news is that we now have full access to the next area and we don't have to lose our boat either, so... All is right with the world, at least for now. Yeah, at least for now. Now, we do need to save up because we have a boss fight coming up and we're going to be making use of those, use of those traps as well. You remember, I'm sure, that the door that was blocked off is on this same level, so just head all the way over to the right. Oh, just in terms of setup very briefly for this fight, I've gone for those traps, of course, which I told you about. So I'll just show you my setup on the characters here. Uh, Thunderstorm is the first of the three traps. Apart from cures and revives, I've not gone for other elements because, well, we're not going to be using them. Imbecile, get that on there. That's going to be helpful. It temporarily decreases foe's magical power. Uh, Deluge is one of the other traps, the second of the three. And then if we head over to our third party member, in my case, Lynx. Doesn't matter what order you've got this stuff on. Then Carnivore is the third trap. So I've got those equipped on him. And very important that you have Diminish. That's going to really help out. This fight is kind of unique in how it works. So I'm going to get into the battle. Well, we need to go through the... The means of doing so to get to it first. Yep, we're just going to head through here. But once we get into the fight, I'm going to explain it a little more to you. Okay. Yeah, just head outside. And you need to try and catch the janitor. Just follow him whichever way he goes. So whichever door he uses, just use the same. And eventually... You'll bump into him. There we go. Okay, we'll ask him where the Dead Sea is. Yeah, remember this guy was the... The boss of Marbule once upon a time. Tell him we'll use Brute Force. And this is where we get our boss fight. This is Sage. He has 1,500 hit points. And the way he works is really interesting. Now, if you just want to kill him, just stick to physical attacks. And that's all he will do as well. So you can just heal up through those. And it should be a very easy fight. However, if you do that, he's not going to cast any of his elements, including the trappable ones, which we really want. Now, the way this works, if you want to get him to cast elements to trap, is when you cast an element of a certain colour, he will begin an attack routine that ends with a powerful element of that colour. So if you use an attack element that is red, he will use a bunch of abilities that finish with Inferno. Okay, likewise, if you use a blue attack element, he will go through a bunch of elements and stuff until he finishes with Deluge, one of the trap elements that we want. Green will mean that he'll end up casting Carnivore after a set of other attacks. If you use a black element, he'll end up casting Freefall, which is trappable. If you use a yellow element, Thunderstorm at the end of his attack routine, and a white element, he'll use Holy Light. So what we're going to start with is just using normal attacks. That will build up our levels and will also just mean that he will only use normal attacks as well. Nothing we can't handle, I should think, for seasoned adventurers such as ourselves. And then we're going to be able to make a choice as to what it is we want to capture. But before we do any of that, we are also going to reduce his damage because his attack patterns are pretty insane. I warn you, okay? They really are insane. Oh, that's really annoying when that happens. So back to Dragon now. Let's see what is it we've got. Okay, I don't want to use Thunderstorm yet because that's going to set off his attack pattern before we've got prepped for it. 
So let's heal all. Just to get ourselves back up to snuff there. And then with Harley. Yep, yeah, let's go ahead and cast Imbecile. I'm pretty sure this won't set him off on the black attack pattern, which would finish in free fall. Because it's not technically an attack. Okay, and then for uh, Lynx, oh, I still need to get him to level 6. So we'll just do level 1 attack here. I'm not interested in killing him because we're going to be escaping and what have you. To try and get as many traps as we can get. Diminish. Temporarily halves damage. Which is also very, very useful. And then we can choose. Doesn't matter for now because we want to get all of them anyway. But we can either put the Carnivore, the Thunderstorm... Or the Deluge trap down. The good news is, whichever trap we put down, classes as an attack element of the same colour. So that will set him off correctly. So let's start by levelling up. Okay, he's doing turn black, which ends in free fall. Kind of annoying, so we're going to have to heal up from this. But at least we've got the debuffs going. Yeah, at least we've got the debuffs going. Um, I feel like we just need to be patient now for him to finish this, this routine. So we'll just stick to level 1 attacks for now. So we don't kill him. If you have the other traps down, of course, you can use those as well. But I don't right now. Okay, so next up he's going to be doing Imbecile followed by Free Fall, which I can live with, so I'm going to defend. Lynx still needs a couple of attacks to boost his levels here. Okay, and now we'll defend. There's probably a faster way of doing this, because we do want to get all of these traps eventually. But let's just see how we get on here. Okay, that's fine. Here comes free fall. Shouldn't do too much damage as long as our debuffs are still in effect. In theory. Okay, that's okay. And now he's done that, let's go ahead and put a trap down. So let's start with Deluge, shall we? Which is a nice um, water ability. Does a fair bit of damage. So this should trigger him to turn blue. And... Let's just keep defending. See what he does. Yeah, he's going to turn blue now. So let's just use turbo mode. Magma burst. I think that's different to the original game where he should do fire pillar. I hope he still does deluge. This is my first time trying this on the Radical Dreamers edition. And yeah, he does do number, but now is it deluge? Let's see. Yeah, he does. Perfect. Okay, alright, so we trapped Deluge, which is exactly what we wanted to happen, so let's see if we can do uh, something else now, maybe Carnivore, we'll get him to turn green, followed by Upheaval, what have I got in terms of healing, not much, oh, recover all, okay, if we can get two or three traps per battle, that's just going to reduce the amount of times we have to keep running away and then coming back, of course. Uh, I don't know if we actually need to do much more with Harley. What has she got in terms of traps? Oh. It'd help if she had enough levels. Right, let's check again. Oh, she's got the Deluge. Okay, well, I don't need to do that again. Not for this fight. I do want to get some more, but I'm going to try and get one of each if I can. Okay, there's the upheaval. So we should get a normal attack, Bat Eye Carnivore. There's the normal attack, Bat Eye, and then Carnivore. Okay, so just Thunderstorm to go now. Is it level 5? It might be level uh, 6. Okay, need to attack again. 
Yeah, there we go. Thunderstorm. So this will do exactly the same again. We'll trigger a, a set of attacks. So begin with turn yellow and finish with thunderstorm. So let's just keep defending while he does this. So we can get a nice collection of traps with this little method here on this fight. Here's the thunderstorm, nice and trapped. And to be honest with you, I'm kind of thinking he hasn't got into his low attack mode. Sorry, his uh, critical state yet. So we might be able to just go right ahead and do another one immediately. Oh, it's level six, isn't it, for this one? Okay, we've still got one stamina left. Perfect. I think it can repeat the same one consecutively. I mean, having full yellow is probably a bad idea. But let's see what happens. Okay. He's got it in for Draggy at the moment, it would seem. Okay, yeah, our second Thunderstorm. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Not too bad. I do think we need to perhaps heal up, though. Uh, before we do that, maybe Lynx could throw a spell down. A trap, rather. Level 4, level 5. Is he just trapped level 5 or level 6? Level 5. Brilliant stuff. Let's get another Carnivore. And... Maybe Draggy has a single target here. Let me check. Okay, so we're getting the pattern now for Carnivore again. Uh, we've got capsules. I suppose we could use a capsule. It's not going to hurt. Like I say, we can escape and rejoin the fight, but... I want to try and do that as few times as possible if we can. So we've got our trap down. Let's just keep defending now. So we've got two. What have we got two of? Two thunderstorms. This will be two carnivores. So if we can get another del deluge, we'll have two of those as well. Oh, he's done it. Brilliant. Didn't even realise. So he's back to his normal attack pattern now. Okay, so Harley next. Uh, yep, yeah, we can cast Deluge immediately with level 5. You guys see how this works now, don't you? I would like to ideally try and get three of each if we can. I'm not sure whether we're going to have the healing to do that all in one fight. He's now in his weak form as well, which is just something that I need to be cautious of here. Because I don't want to kill him until I've got three of each trap. So let's just go through the routine. We'll have two of each. Our debuffs would have probably worn off by now. Okay, here comes Deluge. Yeah, I can't do much else because if we keep attacking him to build up levels, we're going to end up killing him. So I'm going to run away at this point. And then we'll enter the fight again. And just try and get at least one more of each trap. I do want three of each. You know, so we can max them out in battle if need be. <laughs> okay, so we can go back and save. Just to make sure that we do keep those traps we've got all banked up. The guy will let us past willy-nilly whenever we wish now. All I've done then is entered the fight and captured some more traps. So in total now of Deluge, Carnivore and Thunderstorm, I should have a total of five of each. As long as my maths is correct. I haven't actually checked, but I'm pretty sure I've done it five for each. It has taken a bit of time, uh, obviously. But in my opinion, it is worth it. And to have a good number of them like that will keep us going, you know, when we swap party members around and stuff and don't have to keep on equipping all the time. I just find it, you know, useful while we've got the opportunity to grab what we can grab. So hopefully the boss will be going down very soon here. 
since he's already in his crit state. I skipped ahead, obviously, since I've shown you the fight up until this point. And it was the same thing again. Another round or two. Let's put it into turbo mode. It's what it's there for. Oh, we've done it. Perfect. Right, so we gain our star level. Level 23 now, along with our major stat gains. And let's heal up. And a Mithril Helmet is our item reward for the fight itself. But that's not the only thing we get. We also get a key item. The Fiddler Crab. And also a tip on how we can access the Dead Sea. Yeah, so with the key item in our possession and the correct location, we can finally, hopefully, proceed. And off he goes. Yeah, so you'll probably remember that Nikki's ship is attached to the side of the current one. Now, before we finish up here, and we've done what we need to do as far as the story is concerned, there's a couple of characters we can potentially recruit. However, I think because time is pushing on, I am going to leave that for the next episode. So thanks so much for watching today, guys. I hope, you, you know, it's been helpful to you. We've got some progress done, which is always nice. And we've got that rainbow shell as well, which is a real bonus. So I hope you all have a wonderful day. Please don't forget to drop a like if you did enjoy the video and subscribe for future content. And I'll see you in the next episode.